sorry Millbrook, but I'm having fun in this little French fancy. Magnifique! Car Obsession is proudly supported by Exchange My Car, Carly and Draggy. For a limited time only, use Car Obsession 10 to get money off with Carly and there's also a discount code for Draggy as well, which again is Car Obsession 10. All of the details are in the video description below. The Alpine A110. This is a French sports car that wowed the motoring world when it was revealed in 2017 thanks to its retro looks, lightweight design and fantastic driving capabilities. There's now a new variant designed for those who want even more performance and it's called the A110S. Haha! <laughs> oh, I slipped myself into this very nice save out seat. It's got orange stitching as part of an optional pack. Right, so from the outset, I have this car for a very limited time. We're talking about 15 to 20 minutes, and to be honest, I've already kind of run over a bit, so I really must be getting on. Thankfully, this is a quick car. <laughs> pretty fruity as well so i have a 1.8 liter turbocharged four cylinder petrol which offers 300 horsepower along with 340 newton meters of torque power is of course fed to the rear wheels via a seven speed automatic no there's no manual i'm afraid zero to 60 well zero to 62 is done in 4.2 seconds and the top speed would normally be normally be 155 but this, looks, this has got the aero kit again as an optional package. This gives me more carbon fiber bits and a top speed of 170 miles per hour. Oh yes. All right, we are good to go. Oh. That's a fruity exhaust tone, I like that. It's got a growl to it, a kind of a growl and a slight raspiness to it. The aero kit also gives you more downforce, as the name would suggest. With this kit, you get an extra 141 kilograms of it. Oh, that's a lot of downforce. Right, okay. Let's get an idea of what this car feels like. Oh, a little bit of understeer there. Met with a bit of oversteer on the exit. The steering, wheels, the steering wheel feels fantastic. It's Alcantara. It feels lovely in the hands. These say about seats, they're really nice. They're proper bucket seats, as you would imagine, but they've got an air of quality and luxury to them. You've got nice diamond stitching, and they do hold you in place rather well. Maybe want them to be a bit tighter, but I suppose if you were a broader fellow, you wouldn't want that. Like pop in sport mode, because why wouldn't you? Oh, yes. My brakes perform well brakes have got a really oh that's nice the brakes have a really firm weight to them well the brake pedal I should say the brake pedal feels firm I like that right let's have a oh let's take over on manual mode with the flappy paddles which are a very good size they are very easy to get hold of oh making popcorn at the rear This car would normally start. Oh. Oh, I had to enjoy that corner. This car would normally start from £59,995. Uh, this car has been treated with a few options. So this car is almost £72,000, but of course, those are optional extras. The aero kit I mentioned, that's around £4,600. What exactly do you get for your money? The S offers standard features such as 18-inch alloys wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres, LED lights, rear parking sensors, active sport exhaust,
keyless entry, vocal sound system, climate control, orange Brembo brake calipers, save out sport seats, Alpine telematics and 7 inch touchscreen to name a few. There are a fair few options fitted to this car but the highlight features are the fire orange paint, the aero kit, Michelin Pilot Sports Cup 2 tyres and front and rear parking sensors with a reversing camera. Anyway, I'm going to shut up for a few seconds because I really want to experience the car and just get a feel for it. These drives are very short and you don't always get the best chance to get an idea of what a car truly feels like. Oh. Okay, gearbox seemed a little bit dim-witted there. Wasn't sure whether it wanted second or third. Oh, those brakes feel fantastic. They got a real old school feeling to them, almost as if there's no servo. The steering, oh, the steering is positive. It's got a good weight to it as well. Good feedback. And it really helps you be in tune with the car. From a slightly negative perspective, these seats are lovely, but I do feel like I'd want to be sat a little bit lower in the car. This is a sports car after all, but it feels I'm, I'm not gonna say it feels like I'm, I'm sat on the car, but at the same time, I would want to be sat a little bit lower, just to get that real sports car feeling. The Alpine A110S is a light car, very light in fact. This has a curb weight of 1,119 kilograms, so very light indeed, in a world where cars are getting bigger, more bloated. And that's why you don't need a particularly large engine. Oh, 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 that's bumpy, I'm gonna switch lanes. That's very bumpy. That's why you don't need a big engine in this car because it hasn't got a lot of weight to lug about. And lighter cars mean better handling they feel more engaging, like being chased down by a Stelvio. Now, although this is a private road, believe it or not, I am still deemed by a speed limit, so I do need to be careful. The marshals are a bit uh, flag happy here. Oh, that feels brilliant. But on the brakes once more, turn it in. The handling is good. I am getting a, a slight sense of understeer on the initial turn in, but then the chassis does sort itself out and the nose does follow your inputs. I would say the engine sounds, dare I say, a bit droney towards the top of the, uh, the red line. Oh, oh yes. Oh, that is a satisfying surge. I'm going faster than I really should be. Sorry, Millbrook. Well, we're having fun in this little French fancy. Magnifique! Oh, oh! It's the pops that really get you. As a petrol head, oh, that's very satisfying. Probably gonna be making inappropriate noises soon. Me, I mean, not the car. I would love to see what this car would be like with a manual gearbox because if I spent longer with the car, my view may change, but at this point, I don't know, the seven speed feels like it's getting in the way a little bit. At some points, it just feels like it's not quite sure what it wants to do. Oh, pop, 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 pop. Oh, so snarly. You wouldn't believe that just, this is a, a 1.8 four cylinder, because it's just, it's got so much character to it. I imagine on a track, this would be sensational. Now, speaking of, uh, of the track, this car is more focused for that kind of environment. But what about the more mundane things? Comfort, you may want to drive this on a day to day basis. The ride, I'm not going to lie, is firm. Is it firm enough to stop, well, 
obviously everyone's different, but would it be firm enough to stop me from drive, driving it day to day? No, but I must admit, I do drive some modified cars, so I'm maybe not the best person to ask them that kind of thing. But let's try and think of your, your average Joe. Yeah, the ride is jiggly. It may be a little bit too much for some to, to put up with on a day-to-day -day basis, but I think if you're looking at a car like this, you're already committed into buying something that is of a sportier nature. So I don't think that's really gonna be too much of an issue. Right, I think I'm maybe taking liberties, but I'm gonna do one more lap, one more lap, and then the people at Alpine can have a polite moment at me for spending too long in their car. I'm sorry, Alpine, but this is a positive ad advertisement because I don't want to stop driving this car, and that is a good thing. So the fact I'm spending longer in it, I let Stelvio go past me. He's itching to get past me, so to be fair, he has got more power. Oh, here comes the uh, the Julia with one of those 360 cameras, I think. Let those go past me. Yeah, first impressions are very much positive. I do think the gearbox gets in the way a little bit. Um, actually, one thing I'd like to speak about is the interior. Although this is a sports car and it's lightweight, don't think for a moment that it's stripped out like a Caterham. I've got a seven inch touchscreen. I've got plenty of Alcantara. Thanks to options, I have this lovely orange stitching, which complements the, the um, exterior fire orange paintwork beautifully. Oh, another option, which I haven't mentioned, I really should have done, I've got the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tyres for even better grip. Normally, from factory, this car would come with the Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres, but of course, the Cup 2s are more track focused, and I think that's why I may be getting a hint of understeer, because I think the tyres aren't quite warmed up to their optimal temperature. I must admit, this is my th th uh, third lap of the Alpine circuit, the hill circuit, whatever you want to call it in Millbrook, and yeah, I can feel the the front end is getting, yeah, it is getting a bit tighter with my inputs. I do have a, a train of cars. But I'm just gonna hold back, so I really wanna pin it. Ooh. Oh, that sounds phenomenal. Very grippy through there, thanks to the Cup 2 tyres. Oh. That exhaust note, oh, it's beautiful. You get the snarls, you get the growl, you get the pop, pop, pop on the overrun. This is a rewarding car to drive. I just wish I had a bit longer with it. So Alpine, if you're watching, please, please let me have one of these for a little bit longer than 20 minutes or so because it feels like I'm barely tapping into the car's character, the car's soul. And it does feel like it has a soul. Oh. So coming to the end of this short but sweet drive in my little fire orange uh, French fancy. So to summarize, what do I like? I like the power, I like the performance, I like the handling, I like the overall feeling of the car, it's positive. But what don't I like? If I'm honest, on this short drive, I don't like this seven speed or um, DCT. It just feels a little bit clunky. Sorry, Alpine, but I do need to be honest. Um, as I said, I would like the seats to be set a little bit lower. It, it just feels like I'm kind of overlooking the car too much as opposed to being hunkered down and being part of the machine. But overall, this is a very good car. I can certainly see the appeal. I just wish it was offered with a manual gearbox. I just think that would be, that would, that would transcend this car onto the next level. Some may agree, some, some may disagree. But I just think it would just help to add that extra engagement. I've waited a long time to drive one of these ones and I can say it hasn't disappointed. Steering wheel's lovely. I love the fact that you've got the um, sport mode right there. No mucking about, just bang. No going through tedious touch screens, bang, straight into sport mode. That's how it should be and then back into normal, but you can hear the exhaust note change.
I would have had a GoPro mounted to the back, but the back's a little bit dirty and the GoPro wasn't, wasn't taken to the bumper. And I've lost GoPros here before. Thankfully got them back, but um, yeah, I didn't want to take the risk. Because I haven't always got my GoPros back when I've lost them. And they're not cheap, so yep. Hopefully that little blip at the start was enough to, to satisfy you. Oh, and this has been enough to satisfy me as well. Every now and then you get a tsh from the turbo as well. It's a very pleasing car. I would, I would love to experience one on track, so I imagine on a race circuit, this thing is just, mmm, just absolute mustard. Dijon mustard. See what I did there? French. Anyway. I really must give this car back to Alpine because there's probably a queue of people waiting for it. And I'm not surprised because it is a very fun little car. And proof, you don't need a large engine to have fun. Lovely th old 3 Series over there. So, I do hope you have enjoyed this video. A massive thank you to Alpine UK for making this possible. If you have enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.